let's talk about the United States presidents and black civil rights. Yeah. And we are going to start with um, one of the most racist presidents we've had. Uh, he is the one who showed one of the most racist movies in the country in the White House. It was one of the first movies to be screened in the White House. And I am referring to Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson was the, I believe he was the 28th president of the United States. Yes. And he followed William Howard Taft. He was a member of the Democratic Party at the time. That's the equivalent of the Republican Party, right? And the Democratic Party was the party of slavery. Yes, they were. Mm-hmm. Um, he also served as the president of Princeton, and as the president of Princeton, he fought really hard to make sure that no black person entered that school, despite the fact that at the time, Ivy League schools were starting to let in a small number of black people. Woodrow was like, not at my school. Absolutely not. No. Now, he was a member of the Confederate States of America. Mm-hmm, he was, yeah. And Wilson was also a defender of slavery. And he was one of the foremost promoters of the Lost Cause Theory. The Lost Cause Theory said that slavery was good, enslaved people were happy, and enslavers were kind. Woodrow Wilson, everybody. Now, remember, I said that he screened uh, one of the most racist movies in the history of the United States of America at the White House. Do you know what that movie was? Some of you do. Yes, A Birth of a Nation. It was shown by Woodrow Wilson in the White House. And for those who don't know, the movie might as well have been called recruitment for the KKK. As a matter of fact, I think it was a recruitment movie for the KKK. The message of A Birth of a Nation is that previously enslaved uh, African Americans were uncivilized and savage and that order was restored to the chaotic South after the Civil War by noble Ku Klux Klan. I do want to note that uh, Woodrow Wilson would eventually distance himself from the screening because of backlash. Go figure. Nobody wanted a virulently racist movie to be shown in the House of the People. I wonder why. Now, Wilson was elected to office with an overwhelming number of the black vote. However, when he took office, he was not for the black people, no. You have to understand first that the federal government was the only avenue that black people had to make a decent living, a decent and fair living and that the federal government at the time was what was propping up the black middle class. Okay? Okay. Now, when Wilson took office, there were, I believe it was, 19 black supervisors. He fired all but two. He fired all but two. The diplomats for Haiti and St. Domingo, they were normally black made sense, right? He said, not on my watch, and he made them white. And when it came to the federal government departments, well, his cabinet was made up of Southern Democrat white men. Postmaster General Albert S. Burleson 
urged the president to establish segregated government offices. Now, Woodrow Wilson was like, I'm not going to do that. No, it hasn't been segregated before, and I'm not going to start that now, but y'all do whatever you want. I don't care. He didn't stop them from segregating their departments, and that's exactly what they did. Segregation was implemented first at the post office, which was home to over 60% of the federal employees at the time. Burleson dismissed all of the black postmasters across the South. Next came the Treasury Department, which had the second highest number of black workers. They segregated the cafeteria and the bathroom. In fact, there was one department that had only one black employee, so they built a cage around him. The head of the Internal Revenue Division in Georgia fired all the black employees, saying there are no government positions for Negroes in the South. A Negro's place is in the cornfield. Agencies adopted whites-only policies, claiming they didn't have the accommodations for blacks. The United States Civil Service Commission instituted a new policy requiring job applicants to submit a personal photo with their application. You see, it made it easier for them to reject you based on race at the beginning of the hiring process as opposed to after the interview. And Woodrow Wilson did nothing to stop it. Because, you see... He really thought that segregation was best for blacks and whites. He literally told the black community the purpose of these measures was to reduce the friction. It is as far as possible from being a movement against Negroes. I sincerely believe it is in their best interest.